Hello guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. Today we will be discussing the question House Robber 3. This is the third part of the problem House Robber and I highly recommend you to do the previous two parts before jumping onto this part because then it will create much more sense to you. In the previous parts, the amount of money in each house is given in form of an array but in this question it is in the form of a binary tree. No two adjacent nodes can be dropped at once because then the police will be alerted. Either the answer will be the sum of all the nodes at even level or all the nodes at odd level. The answer can be the value 3 plus 3 plus 1 or it can be the sum of the odd level which is 2 plus 3 which is 5. So we see that the maximum is 7 so we return it. We can also see that same in the case of second example where we do not consider the root node and the rest of the values because the even level gives us the maximum answer which is 9 and we return it. Now let's going by the logic what we need to do is we just need to add all the odd levels or the even level means skipping one level at each node and then adding it into the sum and then finding the maximum of the even levels or the odd levels. So let's see how we can do this. We'll start coding. So as always, we'll start off with checking the null values. If the root is null, then simply the answer will be a zero. So now this, as we are considering this root node, what we do is we'll create this sum variable and put the root value into it. Now, if we are considering this three value, we cannot add two and three into this. We need to skip this level and go to the next level and add those value into it. To do this, we will have a check that if root dot left is not null, that means the left node exists. If the left node exists, what we need to do is in the sum, we need to add all the values starting from this and this alternating values. If we drop the root node 3, then we can drop this uh, value 1 and starting from this 1, all the alternate nodes. So what we do is, in the sum, we again call the function, but this time it will be root dot left dot left. We'll start from this and same, if we can drop this 1, we can also drop this 3, which will be sum equals to Rob of root dot left dot right. The same will be done for the right tree also. So we have the sum with us. Now, with respect to this root, what will be the alternate sum? If we are considering three, the alternate sum will be the robbing of root dot left and root dot right. So we need to take this sum also. So the next sum will be robbing root dot left and root dot right and as we know we need to take the maximum of the two so we'll have a result which will take the max of the two sum values and at the end we need to return this result now this code is fine uh, it traverses all the nodes and in alternate fashion and then gives us the result. But there is a redundancy. There is a redundancy in calculating some of the nodes which are once calculated should not be calculated again because that take up much of the time. So in order to reduce that, what we need to do is we need to incorporate memoization into this strategy. So in order to do the memoization, what we need is we need to store those values into some data structure so that we can reuse it. I hope you are clear with why we are using memoization over here. But if you are not, quickly let's see it why it is needed. If we rob uh, house 3 and we again call the root dot left for 3 and 1. So we have calculated 3 and 1 and then we start calculating root dot left. That is 2 and 3. We call function on this. Now when we are on this 2. The root dot left for this two, the next sum for this two will again call the value for three. And as the value of three was previously calculated, we need not to calculate it again. So in order to save that much of time, what we do is we store the sum into a map corresponding to the node so that we can re reuse it again. So how we can achieve that? So let's see that. So we need to have a map which will have three node at its key and integer 
as its value. Now we store this result where root is the key and the result is its value that is the maximum sum that we can get when we start robbing from the root itself. If the root was null we were returning 0 but if the map contains the root that means we have already calculated this value in that case also we simply return map.get root and this saves much of our time. When we run this code we get the right result. Let's submit this. The code got submitted successfully. The time and space complexity of this algorithm is often as we are using a map to store all the values and we are traversing over all the nodes. Thanks for watching the video. See you in the next one.